Here is the system which I use for planning my weeks, tracking my progress, building weekly dashboards, and so much more. So first of all, we need some flashcards like these. For this purpose, personally, I use A5 papers and divide them into 16 pieces so as to have small flashcards, which each of them is 5.3 by 3.7 centimeters. Then I personally prefer making a cross like this, which gives me four quadrants. The fourth quadrant is daily habits and routines, for example, such as reading, learning a new language, exercising, and so on. But you shouldn't fill this quadrant now, and you will see why in the following steps. But each of the first three quadrants corresponds to each of your first three goals. And remember that their order is according to their importance. And if you have fewer than three goals, you can use fewer quadrants. For example, in order to move along, suppose that you are a person named David working in a company. But besides your everyday job, you have two goals. For example, your first goal is business related, which is for example writing, and your second goal is to lose some weight so as to improve your health. The next step is to define at least one deliverable for each of your goals which you should deliver by the end of the week. For example, David wants to publish one article with a length of 1000 words every week on his website. And also, he wants to publish a 200 page book each year which is about 50,000 words. So with a simple calculation, you can see that he needs to write 1000 words weekly for his book as well. So these are the deliverables of his first goal. But you may argue that he needs to write more so as to be able to deliver 2000 net words, I mean edited. And we are going to consider this in future steps. For his second goal in the first week, he wants to just measure how much he eats throughout each day of the week because he wants to use a very good strategy called measuring backward which I learned from one of James Clear's article on his website and I will explain it in the future steps which is one of the core fundamentals of this system. Tracking the exact number of calories is hard so he's going to do it roughly. For example, if he usually eats bread and rice with other foods, he's going to take the easy approach and just track how many grams of rice and bread he uses in his meals and because he is sure that he will forget to write down how much he eats throughout the day is going to put some reminders on the table or on the counter so as to be reminded of recording his eating habit. And also he's going to walk 1000 steps each day which is very easy. So here are the deliverables of his second goal. In the next step we should fill the habits and routines quadrants. It is very important to choose habits and routines that support your goals in some way. And if David doesn't choose proper habits that support his goals, he's probably not going to be consistent in doing those habits because he doesn't have enough reason and motivation for doing so. For example, reading is an essential habit for his career because he needs ideas and inspiration from other writers. By the way, in my opinion, reading is a habit that everyone needs it, whether they are a writer or not. And also he needs exercising habits as well for his second goal. In the next step, we should make these stuff more specific and assign a specific times to each task. For example, for his reading habits, he wants to finish a 200 page book such as The Compound Effect every month. So he plans to read 35 pages each week, which is seven pages each day. And he wants to make his plan more specific and he also specifies the book as well. For example, he wants to read some pages from How to Be an Imperfectionist book by Stephen Geis. And for his exercising habits, he's going to go walking around 6 p.m. And it is just 1,000 steps, which is very easy, and he can easily track it using his smartphone. And for his first goal, he's going to wake up early in the morning and start writing for one hour, which leads to at least 500 words each day. So by doing so, at the end of the week, he has written at least 3,500 words, which is far above his goal. But considering this fact that he needs editing, and sometimes deleting some of those words, this plan totally makes sense. But there are a couple of more important steps that we are going to cover in future steps. So after assigning a specific times, or at least making his plan more specific, he's going to track them throughout the week and build a dashboard so as to track his goals. He's going to use this spreadsheet. As you can see, there are a couple of tasks for each of his goals, and he needs tracking them. For his reading habits, he's going to track the time and also the number of pages he reads. For his writing, he's going to track the time and the number of words. And for his walking habits, but he's going to track the number of steps and the amount of time spent on that activity. But in the next step, we need to do some analysis so as to plan the next week, which is very effective. So at the end of the week, you should take the summation of different metrics for each task. Then you need to sum these numbers in order to get the grand total time. And now we should divide each of these numbers by the grand total. This gives you the percentage of time spent on each activity. Then you should sort these percentages from largest to the smallest. Then add another column called cumulative percentage and calculate calculate the cumulative percentages as well. Now we should look at the cumulative column and check for the Pareto principle. Here is the question, are you spending more of your time on your most important goals or not? Because as Jim Rohn says, you shouldn't spend major time on minor things. For example, if David is spending 50% of his time on reading, it's a big problem because although reading is a good habit, but his first goal is writing. So if you have the same problem, you need to fix it for the next week. For example, by using a strategy we are going to cover in the next step. But before going to the next 
next step, I should mention that you can plot different charts. For example, you can plot a pie chart in order to see what percentage of your time has been spent on each of your goals. And also we can plot a Pareto chart in order to get a visual feedback of Pareto principle and your time assignment. And also plotting different line charts gives you a very good insight of your progress throughout the time. But if you want to keep it minimal, you can skip these charts. So in our example, if David is not satisfied with the total amount of time he spent on his goals, I mean the grand total, he can set goal to increase it by 1% every day. But here is the question, how? How can he improve it by 1% every day? So let's take walking as an example. As you can see, walking 1,000 steps each day was not difficult for David. And by average, he has walked more than 1,000 steps each day. So he should try to increase the corresponding number of his weekly goal for walking in the next week. For example, if he wants to improve this habit by 1% every day, he should set his goal to walk about 1,100 steps each day in the next week, which is again insignificant and very easy. He wants to apply the same strategy for his writing habit, but not for his reading habit. And also for his eating habit, and based on the tracking which he has done throughout the first week, he's going to decrease those numbers by 1% every day. For example, if he usually eats 417 grams of rice in his meals, he's going to set goal not to eat more than 390 grams in his meals for the next week. And whether to apply this strategy for task or not depends on the results of the previous step. This kind of planning and goal setting is called measuring backward. Basically, David is setting goals based on his current level and his past performance. And this type of planning and goal setting not only is more realistic and suitable for him, but also it makes the process like a game which is called gamification. Subscribe for more personal development videos.